Would you stand with me in body or spirit as we join together in the call to worship? Above all else, we choose Christ. We choose Christ. Above all else. Good friends, join in the celebration. For the heavens and the earth are already declaring the glory of God. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable to you, O Lord. All right, and let's sing out our opening hymn. And our opening hymn is on 98, To God Be the Glory. Sing strong. join with me in the opening prayer. God of wisdom and truth, it is far better for our tongues to be silenced in these moments, the better to hear you clearly. But our heart's desire is to join with all creation, to praise your name. Speak, Speak to, to us, us afresh, afresh and, and inspire, inspire us, us with, with your, your word. word. Speak, Speak clearly, clearly to our to hearts. Our hearts that we may walk in your ways and live in your love. Give us grace to open our mouths in praise to you alone. Through Christ our Messiah, we pray. Amen. It was in the 
In the name of Jesus, our risen Christ, I greet you. Good morning. Good morning. And a very special, uh, wait, before I say that, I'm going to tell you to turn to one another and offer a happy Sunday greeting to one another. And if you're a UCLA fan, we won last night, so hey, <laughs> all right. Good morning. I know. <laughs> As you take your seats, I do want to say what a privilege and honor it is any time to be able to gather together as the body of Christ and to worship together. So thank you for sharing that privilege uh, here this morning. And if you're online, a very special welcome to you as well. There is a chat feature if you'd care to uh, let your presence be known there and say good morning to the people who are watching online with you. Uh, we are pleased to be able to worship side by side with all of you. Uh, the big announcement, I guess, if you will, for today is that uh, we're gonna take a brief break Immediately following the benediction today and the postlude at this service, everybody take a, a short break and stretch your legs, and then at 12 noon or thereabouts, we will gather for a service of uh, uh, praise to God and memorializing the life of Betty Wisely. So that starts at 12 noon today, and then following the memorial service, there will be also be a lunch provided of Betty's favorite foods. Uh, and so there'll be some opportunities there to share stories and to, to have some reminiscence together. Friends, this um, is such a great time for us to let the world slide off our backs for a while. To take a deep breath. If you're at home, you may want to light a candle along with us to uh, allow the presence of God to help your soul find its center and uh, to establish that firm footing that the psalmist talks about in the 121st Psalm. For God will not let our foot be moved. You have found a good home for your souls and spirits right here at FUMCO. So this is a day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And let us prepare, prepare our hearts to hear the word of God. first lesson comes from the book of James, the third chapter, verses 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness, for all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also, the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. 
With it, we bless the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse those who made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth came blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine, figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Please join me in reading responsively Psalm 124. It's found in the hymnal on page number 846. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, If it has not been the Lord who was on our side when foes rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the flood would have swept us away. The torrent would have gone over us. Then the raging waters would have gone over us. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. We have escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowls. The snare is broken, and we have escaped. Our, Our help is in the, in the name of the Lord, who made, made heaven and earth. The gospel lesson for today comes from the book of St. Mark, the ninth chapter, the 38th to the 50th verse. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, Whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your life causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This time I'll invite Miss Carol to come forward as she shares a word for children. Good morning. Tomorrow morning, the preschool boys and girls are going to be going to visit the firehouse. So on Friday, when I was talking to them about 
how we behave when we go to visit someone. I said something about, one of us should pray for the firemen before we leave. And immediately they all got these very scared looks on their faces. Sometimes praying is scary for boys and girls, especially if they have to do it in front of other people. So we had a little talk about why we shouldn't ever worry about praying. And in the book of James, there's a lot of really good advice about prayer. And it kind of goes, it follows this pattern, who, what, when, where, and why. At least that's the way I see it. And so we talked about who should pray. Anyone, everyone, from the littlest kid to the oldest person alive. And what should we pray about? We can pray about anything, anything God would like to hear from us. If we have a problem, if we're excited about something, if we're scared, anything that might be going on in our minds. And when should we pray? Some people think, especially boys and girls, oh, we only pray when we get up in the morning or when we have lunch, we pray for our food or a snack, or before we go to bed, we pray. But we can pray anytime. Boys and girls can pray anytime during the day when you're out on the playground, when you're in school, when you're with your friends, when you're home with your parents, any situation, we can pray. And where do we pray? Anywhere. We can pray at school, we can pray here at church, we can pray when we're out with our friends, any place, okay? But why do we pray? Why would we pray for those firemen? We talked about that a little bit at preschool. And we want them to be safe, we want them to stay healthy, we want to make sure that they're able to do a good job to keep us safe, but that they're safe too. So lots of things to pray about. So by the time I got through talking with those boys and girls, they all felt a little bit better about what they might be able to say if they had to pray for those firemen. And the things to remember, who, what, when, where, and why, that applies to anything. Any place that we go, anybody that we're praying for, any situation in our lives. God just wants to hear our thoughts and our prayers. And it says right in the book of James that prayer is powerful. It's powerful because God is the most powerful being in the universe, and he's going to answer those prayers in the best way possible. So by the time I got through talking, I had a couple of volunteers to pray. So let's pray about that right now. Heavenly Father, please help us always to remember that you want to hear our words, our thoughts, and our prayers. Help us, please, to not hesitate in speaking out and saying our thoughts to you and help us always to remember to listen to. We know that you'll answer those prayers in the best way possible and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.
Will you pray with me? We ask, O Lord, that you would come now with your Holy Spirit. Touch all our hearts that we might receive from you those thoughts and meditations that are closest to your will and your desire for us and for your creation, that we might receive a blessing of the word from you. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the youngsters that was in my first youth group in a United Methodist Church uh, went on to be a, a very influential pastor in the United Methodist Church, and he's serving a wonderful church in the Denver suburb of Littleton, Colorado. And uh, Judy and I got a chance to go visit there uh, some couple years ago before all of the COVID stuff had happened. And we were sitting down in the sort of the den part of his, his house, and uh, his wife, Lori, was in the kitchen, and Judy was kind of hovering about and talking with Lori, and then Mark was reading an article, and he said to me, it says here that in a typical day, the average uh, human male says about 18,000 words, and uh, in the typical day, the average human female needs to say about 40,000 words. And he read that out loud, and there was a beat in the room, and then he said to his wife, do you think that's true? She says, I don't think it's true. I know it's true. And he said, why would you say that? And she said, because we have to repeat everything we say to you twice, over and over again. Well, this brings up a very important thing uh, for our considerations today. As we've talked about how to picture the vision statement of our church, to be passionate disciples of Jesus who are making the word of God flesh in our mission area, downtown Orange and the surrounding communities. And we see this unfolding as we worship together in spirit and truth, and we talked about that last week. And then in our vision statement, there are three other parts of movement where we welcome people as if they're our family, and we nurture our family into Christian wholeness, and then we spend our whole selves in service and sacrifice to others. You see the progression of that movement as it goes along. But there's another piece to it that doesn't get talked about very often, and that piece is communication. And every single piece of effective communication requires a minimum of two participants. Since it's football season, think of the person who speaks out the first part of the communication as the quarterback. But unless somebody at the other end is catching the pass, then no communication has taken place. Somebody has made sounds, somebody has made words, but we might as well be a troop of gibbon monkeys just chattering in the treetops. If no one's listening, we are not communicating. Are you with me on this? Okay. I, I need to check in here because if you're not hearing this, I need to change what's in my playbook and try a different offense. Uh, we have to communicate to be alive as a species. I mean, you think about it now. All the species of the world have that special something. My tortoise, Samson, God put built-in armor all around him. And if he senses danger just a little bit, boom, he just pulls into that, <laughs> that shell and he's, just, he's a, an impenetrable fortress. Some creatures that God has made, he gave wings and feathers so that if danger approaches, they can flee to the trees. They can fly away. Some he gave claws. Some he gave the ability to leap tremendous distances, 10, 15, 20 times their body length. In the channel off the coast of Canada, between here and Catalina Island, there's a particular kind of fish with a very long bottom section of its tail and very, very long pectoral fins that come out right behind its gills. And if it is startled, it will start up out of the water, and that tail is still in the water, starts kicking like crazy, and then the pectoral fins come out, 
and it soars up and makes usually a large banking right-hand turn and then crashes a quarter mile away into the waves. You know what they are. They're called flying fish. God has given strategies to every species on the earth to help them cope with the apex predator that is lurking nearby. Except for humans. We have no claws. We have not much fur. We have no long fangs. We have no wings. We have no scales up and down our back. We can't roll into a ball like a pill bug and be safe. You know what we do have? We have each other. Maya Angelou said it best, that great poet of the last century, lying and thinking last night how to build myself a home where water is not thirsty and bread loaf is not stone. I finally thought of one thing, and, and I don't believe I'm wrong, that nobody, but nobody, can make it out here alone. She's right. We need community to survive, to measure our progress, to stir the heart and the soul. We need each other. We need to be able to communicate. But the tricky thing is that the Scripture affirms this now, that communication, the way we know it as speech, as nonverbal cues, as whatever it is that we use to communicate, is simply something that reflects what's already in the heart and soul. And inside of every one of us is a war going on between the Holy Spirit, which is hard at work in those who are baptized, to convert an old sin nature into a new Christ nature so that you would share the very nature of God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And by the way, if the Trinity is confusing to you, think of it this way. God, in naming the one true God, decided to reveal to us a community of Father, Son, and Spirit so that we would understand that even in the Godhead, the principle of relationship is essential to our survival, to our wellness, to our wholeness. But we also share what has been labeled by so many theologians, a sin nature. And really what it is is the desire to succeed in this world that is corruptible, in this world that is uh, going to end, in this world where we will have an ending. As Matthew said to the church, don't store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth corrodes where moth destroys and rust corrodes and thieves break in and steal, but you lay up for your treasure in heaven. Lay up your treasure in heaven. For here the moth cannot destroy and the rust cannot corrode and thieves do not break in and steal. So much of the communication coming at us from our external world right now is designed to get you to desire more and more of the creation as we know it now. And the Holy Spirit is fighting this brave battle inside of each of us, trying, trying like crazy to get us to withstand the buffeting of the marketers and the advertisers and those who shout with loud megaphones ceaselessly to tell you that you're already okay, that you are perfectly loved by God, that you don't need to earn your reward in heaven because God has already earned it through his son, Jesus Christ, and made it a gift to you through the free gift of his grace. Now, we are in a crowded morning here at Funko, so I want to just introduce to you this notion that our communication is more than just a means of getting our point across. It is the essence of our survival and as a church, as a congregation of God's beloved, we are called by Christ to communicate effectively in the language of the kingdom of God. Or as Jesus said at the end of the gospel lesson today, be at peace with one another. 
So far as you are able, live at peace with one another. No more calling down fire from heaven on our enemies. That is not, that is not our way. And so there are, are three considerations that we as a church need to become, I think, a little more intentional about. Number one, are we communicating? Number two, to whom are we communicating? And, and number three, how are we communicating? These are each, in their own way, an essential part of the story. The, the what of our communication is very simple for us. Tell the world about Jesus. Announce the kingdom of God. Call people to repent and call them to the good news that they can be a part of Jesus' kingdom, which has already begun. That's a simple message. That should be the core. That should be the primary priority of our message every time we open our mouths or our computers or our social media. We are the disciples of Jesus. We are his followers together. We are his family together. Repent and believe the good news. The kingdom of God has already begun. That's our, that's our what. With whom gets a little tricky because it moves in three directions. We communicate with God in our worship, in our private and devotional prayers, in the inward places of our heart where only God sees in secret. We communicate with God, and that's essential. But we also communicate as a congregation within the congregation. And then there's the message we give to the outside world. And this is what causes every person who wears robes like I wear to quake in fear. Because there isn't enough of me to follow you around every day and make sure that when you communicate with the world around us, you are communicating the gospel message of Jesus Christ in your word, in your actions, that as you interface with the world, that you will leave people with an unequivocal no notion that they have just encountered a disciple of Jesus Christ. We communicate with God, we communicate with each other, and we communicate with the world. Now, in 30-some-odd years of being a pastor in the United Methodist Church, I have discerned one, one basic strategy for communication that most United Methodist congregations have employed. You want to hear it? It's very simple. Hire a part-time secretary and throw everything at him or her. Make a phone call, leave a message, write a short note, Stop her on the way to worship and say, hey, can you put something in the bulletin tomorrow? There, I've done my communication. Well, you threw a pass. But I'm not going to promise you that anyone caught it. I had a few years in marketing and advertising, and way back then, before I went to seminary, the rule was, Human beings need to see something in print a minimum of 12 times. And they need to hear it auditorily a minimum of eight times where they don't hear it at all. Let me say that again. You need to see it in print 12 times. You need to hear it at least eight times. Now, I think those numbers are soft these days. When the typical congregation, when it wants to communicate, even with its communication within the church, instead of saying one thing 12 times, they say 12 things one time. And they cram our bulletins and our newsletters and everything else so full of so many things. And nobody can hear. The, when you have 35 things on the activities page of a, of a busy church, you know the only person who reads the one you care about? The one who put it in there, thank you so much. Now we're communicating. And the typical reason that they want to read that is they want to make sure that the part-time secretary who's responsible for communicating their ministry has done the work. But we gather for an hour on Sunday morning. 
maybe an hour for or an hour and a half for a rehearsal for choir or for a Bible study or something else. There are 168 hours in the week. There's a message in there from the Lord that how we communicate within the church is only a small piece of our overall communication picture. And most churches, because they're so busy trying to get a handle on communicating within the church, most churches largely ignore how it is we communicate with the outside world. Or, to say it more correctly, most churches just trust their members to get the word out there somehow. And you do. Every one of us. Now, if you write nothing else down from what I say today, I want you to take this home because I have sensed this to be an absolute truth of our life in community together, regardless of the congregation. Every single conversation that takes place between members of FUMCO or on this campus permanently changes the shape of our church. There isn't a wasted word anywhere in the kingdom of God. When I was at Lyft Ministries, I used to coach congregations and say, one of the things we need to talk about now is sarcasm. Because the more we get to know one another, the more we want to impress one another with our, our easy attitude, and we get to say those hard, razor-sharp words to each other, and then just say, ah, I was just kidding, I was just kidding. You know I was kidding, right? But if you're brand new in a community, if a new visitor should come in here and hear the way that we joke and laugh and and snipe at each other, it's terrifying to new people. They don't understand. And more to the point, they think, I hope I never come under that guy's scope as he's shooting around the room. Sarcasm can be deadly to church communication. So can gossip. One of my first Sundays in this congregation, I stood here, right here at the top of the steps and said, Fumco, for as long as I will be here, I hope will be a gossip-free zone. I threw a great pass that day. I don't know if that many of us caught it. But let me go over the rules one more time. If the person that you're speaking about isn't in the room with you, and you don't have express permission to discuss them with somebody from them, then you don't talk about them. It's that simple. So when somebody comes to you and says, did you see what happened to Audrey last week? And you say, I don't see Audrey here with us right now, so why don't we wait until she can tell us her story herself? But we all have to be the police for this. We have to self-police these things to make our communication effective. Let me bring this home as quickly as I can this morning. The how of our communication is becoming increasingly important. I heard a bright young pastor who is brilliant at interpreting the cultural signs around us refer to the phone that's in your purse or your pocket today as your connection to a digital nervous system that interconnects all of us. It's a relentless source for most of us of anxiety in our lives. And it barks at us seven days a week, 160 hours a week. We have to be cautious and careful and intentional about how the church shows up on the internet, how the church makes use of technology, how the church communicates with the outside world. In 2002, when I was sent to the Central Coast community of Napomo to begin work on a brand new congregation there, what I found is that most of the people who lived in Napomo lived on uh, properties that were a minimum of an acre to an acre and a half in size. The house was set way back from the road. There was a fence or a gate, and there was two or three Rottweilers in every yard. 
Knocking on doors and hanging door hangers was going to be a non-starter in that community. So the how of communication to be, had to be, be examined. re-examined. So we had to make use of things like the internet and direct mail pieces and other kinds of things. And I had to get myself into some of the community organizations around the area and start handing out business cards like crazy. And then when we had people coming, we had to get them to get the word out as well. Technology is a really important thing. And every church, every church that's going to make it out the other side of this pandemic and be an effective witness for Christ in the world, every church has to make a huge, steep commitment. You have already been feeling this, to leveraging the technology that's available to us so that we can make our presence known. That's the how. But let me back all the way up the process again. The how, the who, and the what. In, in that order. What we're going to communicate has to be dialed in specifically. Because all technology really does is make what we're saying really, really loud. If you don't know what it is you're going to say, well, the old expression from the early days of the computer industry was garbage in, garbage out. Garbage into a microphone is a lot more garbage coming out the other side. And as James is reminding us, words are, are incredibly important. There's no neutral setting. You don't get to steer the boat out into the river and then let go of the helm. You have to have your hand on the rudder constantly. Constantly. This little tiny rudder, this tongue that is in our head, these words that we type on the internet or on our social media, they steer the whole ship. They affect how we're going to be a congregation. Whether we'll be a congregation of joy or a, a congregation that struggles. And so today, we're going to be celebrating the fact that our vision statement is buoyed up on effective communication in our congregation. A sender, a receiver, and a message that the world can't live without. We share it with God in thanksgiving. We share it with one another in fellowship. And we share it in mission to the world. And it's time for FUMCO to communicate as a 21st century church. Amen? Amen. At this time, the ushers are going to come uh, and walk in the midst of you with another card for you to consider and to fill out. And uh, I will go over it as they bring it forward and pass it out to you. Um, this is just a response card for this Sunday's worship to indicate some of the ways that you might be able to be involved in the communication and technology ministry at FUMCO. While the ushers are coming forward, let me give you a simple test to know whether you've completed the pass uh, when you communicate with another person, even one-on-one. -on -one. If they can tell you back in their own words what you just said to them, then you have successfully communicated. This is why we give our kids blue book tests in high school, so they can tell you back in their own words that they got what you were talking about as a teacher. So these are the options. I am called to be a part of a communications coordination team. Much like uh, the, uh, a worship coordination team, this team will make sure that all the pieces are fitting together. They're not the nuts and bolts committee, but they'll design how it is that our message will go out to the world and to one another and in the most effective ways. Or you may have specific talents and abilities that could come to bear on the life of our congregation. If you have talents and abilities in graphic design, we have great need for your abilities. If you can do video and media production, particularly editing uh, videos, 
Do you know we're almost up to episode 480 in our daily videos? And right now, Sam has done almost all of that editing by himself. He could use some teammates. So if you know or are willing to learn video and media uh, production, uh, circle that. If you want to be trained to become part of our sound and audio tech team for worship on Sunday mornings or for other class, uh, class uh, room events, then we'll be able to continue to share our work with the outside world through uh, streaming. If you uh, want to be part of our print media and distribution team, this may include creating mailings and other things. If you know specifically about computers and especially about internet, internet tech and support, um, we would love to hear from you. And if you're really adept at social media and would be willing to help update our website or our Instagram or our Facebook page or some of those things, we will work with you on the what we're going to say, but we need help with how we're going to say it. And so you can do that there. Friends, in the months and the years ahead of us, if we cannot get some volunteer help in these areas, the church is going to need to find ways to staff these things out. And so one way or the other, um, we have a big heavy lift ahead of us. And so then that brings us to the last two on this card. I am called to support the communications and technology ministry as a prayer partner or intercessor. We always need those prayers, that our message lands well and is well received. Find good soil, Lord, for what we are saying. And then finally, I am called to strengthen Pumco's communication and te technology ministry through financial support. These are the ways that you can um, participate in our communication. Um, now, there are still some other things to come, outreach to the community uh, through service, nurture and discipleship, and uh, welcoming ministries and evangelism. You may be called in some of those areas, and that's okay to just indicate that you'll be in prayer uh, on this. But if you have some of those other abilities, we'd love to hear from you. There should be a copy of this card on our website for those worshiping at home, and if not, please contact the church office and we'll get one out to you, and you can digitally get it back to us. So friends, uh, when the offering time comes, please put this in the offering basket and indicate the best way to contact you. And that's your invitation to participate in the life of our church's ministry this week. I do want to share with you uh, some, as we move to our time of prayer, some prayer requests that are uh, in front of us this week. Sandy Porter has asked uh, prayers this week for a friend named Cheryl who is in severe pain, years ago had gone through some chemotherapy and other drug-related uh, treatments which have begun to uh, erode her spine. And so she's in a great deal of pain. The doctors are working diligently to find a course of treatment, but in the mean, mean, meantime, she really needs help uh, with coping with that pain. Uh, Wayne Wilson and Sandy Wilson need to be in our prayers. Sandy's um, uh, cancer has returned with uh, an aggressive nature, and she's being placed in hospice. And this is her time to be borne up on our prayers, for us to lift her up and carry her through this season in her life, and that we pray that God will be with she and Wayne in this season. And... Uh, Carol Hilton is asking prayers for her daughter, Megan, who has received vaccinations uh, uh, and all, but has managed to nonetheless contract uh, COVID, and she's having, uh, she has some asthma issues, and so she's having breathing issues at this time, and, um, and we ask God's grace and prayers for Megan to restore her breath and to drive that uh, virus into abeyance in her body. So with that um, and uh, the needs that are known in the uh, secret places of your heart to God, let us come before the Lord in prayer together.
Please join with me in the prayer of confession. O Lord, our God, what compassion and patience you have shown us, despite our tongues. We have, we hurt, have hurt our, our neighbors, neighbors, our friends, and, and our, our families. families. Bridle our tongues, O God, that we might speak love and not hate. Bridle, Bridle our, our tongues, tongues O God, God that, that we, we might uplift rather than tear down. down. Bridle our tongues, O God, that we might win more citizens for your kingdom. We, we pray in the name, name of the one, the one who, who saved us, us Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. And in these moments, O Lord, we thank you for the grace of your Son, Jesus, for the promise of your written word that as far as the east is from the west, so far do you remove our sin from us. Give to us such an inward disposition of heart and soul that we might receive the ministry of your Holy Spirit deep within us and that we might daily become more and more like Christ. God, let your Holy Spirit be shed abroad in every aspect and fiber of our being so that our feet may walk in the way of Christ, that our thoughts may be of Christ and his great victory at the cross, and that our words may be the words of Christ, that our hands might do the work of Christ. We pray this day for those who are needing a special grace from you, especially those in need of your healing touch. We ask, O oh God, that your peace may come upon the world and that we may be ambassadors of that peace. In all of these things we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us whenever we pray to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will, will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, forgive and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but, deliver but deliver us from, from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom and the power and the, power and the, and glory, the glory forever. forever. And at this time, the ushers will come forward to wait upon us who are here in this room and at home. You are invited to make your offering by using one of the online means or by sending an offering to the, to the church. And please, at this time, put your response cards in the offertory as well.
Almighty God for your grace and love in our lives and for calling us into your service. We thank you for the gift of communication that we can know and speak to one another. And we ask, O oh God, that as we make this offering, you would also bless these tangible gifts we bring, the talents, the abilities, and the treasure of our life to be consecrated by you and used for your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And as you continue to stand, would you please join in our final hymn of the morning, O Church of God United, hymn number 547, verses 1, 2, and 4. that souls which grope in darkness may find the one true light. That's our job together. Is there any higher or more noble calling than that? I don't think so. Friends, as we say our blessing and go for, forward this day, I will not be standing at the back door. I need to do a quick turnaround because we have worship again in a half an hour. So I hope you'll forgive that, and I look forward to seeing you at Betty's memorial service. But for now, let us affirm again that this is our congregation's uh, purpose. Above all else, we choose Christ. We choose Christ. Above all else. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit fill your hearts with peace and establish your homes in the grace and the love of God. Give you strength to bridle your tongue so that it may only be used to proclaim the message of Christ, now and always. Amen. Amen.